Hey guys, thanks for watching the Firearm Blog. This is TFB TV. I am here with John of SIG, and I've got the new cross bolt action rifle. He's going to give us a rundown of that. Hopefully, you guys appreciate this. So, let's start with history, man. What do we got going on here? So, this is our first step into doing a bolt action rifle. Um, as we've been known for ARs, we're first known for pistols. So, um, what we really want to do is we wanted to make sure we had a technology step. We didn't want to just do a bolt rifle and do a chassis. So, a couple years ago, um, my product manager came to me and he said, you know, we got to do a bolt gun. That's really where we want to move into. We brought it to our CEO, walked him through it, and he was kind of hemming it on, giving us a hard time. And he said, all right, if you're going to do it, you guys go back and figure out what makes this a stick. So what, you, what we got out of this is what you see here. So we made up a spec probably about a year, year and a half ago, um, gave it to engineering, sat with a whole bunch of industry experts, people that were snipers, people that were uh, you know, precision shooters, people that were hunters, and said, what are the feature set you want to see? So we got this long list of features, and not all of them made it into this gun, but we feel like we encapsulated as much as we could in the gun to make it for a price point that actually is reasonable for the consumer. It's going to be about a $14.99 gun. Um, so with that being said, I'll walk you through some of the features of this rifle. So the yep. first thing is, it's light. You know, it's about six and a half pounds, depending on which barrel length you have. Yep. Um, we're going to make it in three calibers. We're going to make it in a 6.5 Creedmoor. We're making it in a 308, And then we're doing our own caliber, which is a 277. Sig Fury, okay? okay, which is a 6.8 caliber for the U.S. Army that we've been working on. Okay, okay. Um, so then starting at this end, you know, we have our normal uh, taper lock here for a suppressor if you want to suppress it. Mm -hmm. um, this barrel right here is a 16 inch. Okay, so then what you also are going to see, you're going to see M lock, M lock all over the handguard. We do that for two reasons. One. M lock, we want for attachments, but two, it makes it a lot lighter. Okay, that takes a lot of weight out of the handguard. So you're gonna see it's a nice thin profile, and you have your M lock at six, nine, uh, 12 o'clock, and three o'clock. Okay, so all the way around. Then as you come back, the next, the biggest feature of this gun really is this single piece chassis. Okay, the whole receiver is one solid block of forged aluminum. Okay, okay. so what that basically means. Is the barrel is now going to mount up to that, so you have a lot less connection points for it to possibly get accuracy off. So this gun is the accuracy that you can make of a barrel. Okay, so we removed a lot of the variables. After you get done that, you're going to see there's this black Picatinny rail mounted on the top. Yep. That rail is actually something you can do as accessories. So we have it so it's a standard uh, zero MOA or 20 MOA. We're also making one that's a full length, so it's a full length pick rail on the top. The last thing we're doing is we're also making it so the rings can mount directly to the receiver. So if you don't want to have that connection of Picatinny, it's like one connection on another, sure. you can get rid of that and you can be mounted right up to the receiver, okay? okay. Um, we have a two stage match trigger. This trigger is adjustable from two and a half pounds to four and a half pounds. Okay. Um, then an ambi safety, so both sides, you'll see the rifle have a safety on them, just like an AR. So when you're grabbing this gun by pistol grip, it's going to very much feel like you're running your ARs. It's really user operator is going to feel like you're doing the same interchangeable thing. grips, I'm assuming. It's interchangeable grip, standard AR grip. So if you like a grip better, feel free to take it off and put that on. Yep, you can do anything you want to do there. Okay. Yep. Um, the bolt handle is actually a 60 degree throw. So you'll notice it throws a little bit less than normal. Normally it's 90. The real value in that is not speed of running the bolt, but the fact that when you bring that up, you're not going to be smacking your hands on your scope rings or on your scope. Gives you a little bit more room that's nice to have, okay? Um, the other thing is, you're going to see that the stock is folding. So when you get to the back, that's where it looks like, hey, that's really, really different than most guns. The stock does fold. You press that button, lift up a little bit, and you can make the stock fold. I can't do it right now, of course. Right? So you can fold that, and when you close it, it's actually going to encapsulate your bolt handle, so your bolt handle is not going to go off. Now it looks like a guy could switch that around and make it go the other way. You right? got it. So okay. if you take that bolt out, you can spin that 180 degrees, and now you can throw it the other way. Perfect. So now you can flip to the other side. But you know there's going to be that guy that wants to operate it while it's full. Oh, absolutely. Yep, <laughs> there is. Um, so one of the things, we did an elk hunt this past fall. One of the tests we did with the prototype guns, we took them out and we put them in the field and ran their paces. And it was awesome to be able to take this gun in this configuration, throw it in our pack, and be running up and down the mountains and not have to worry about, you know, a barrel hanging over the top of your head and something kicking your stock kicking in the back of the leg while you're doing that. You know, crossing over trees, under trees, they didn't get in the way. It was much, much cleaner to run through the woods that way than it was when you're at full length. You know, I think it's 25 and a half inches from there to there when you pull it out. Yeah. So then, when the stock's back out, you're going to see that uh, it's adjustable for peak cone height and length of pull. 
cheek comb height is kind of interesting. This is something that we added to it as a feature. Um, it's actually spring loaded, so when you open this up, this comb is spring loaded. Okay? That's great. So the way you adjust it is not traditionally like you turn it and touch it. You actually get behind the rifle, put your cheek on it, and press down to where you want to be, and flip your lock. And now it's set to you. That's great. Okay? Easy. You'll also see that it's adjusted the length of pull, so you turn that screw knob, you can pull it out whatever length you need it to be. Pretty quick and easy to do. There are sling mounts that are ambi, so you can go this side, flip around, put it on the opposite side. There's also an adjustable height by pressing that little button there. Yep. Allows you to change your height. And then you can also change your cant, but you have to do that with screws. That's one thing that's not quick okay. on this. You actually have to do that with a, a, a yeah, Once rack. a guy gets it set up anyway, he's not really gonna touch that. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So that kind of gives you the front to back feature set and benefits of the cross. So let's talk about uh, the bolt. Does it feel serviceable and, and how do you go about doing that? Yeah, the bolt is very similar to a um, AR bolt for that matter. It is a three lug bolt. So I'm probably going to lose parts if I do this in yeah. the air, but we'll try, okay? So when it comes out of the rifle, it is cocked, okay? So you need to uncock it so you flip to that position, right? Once you've done that, you're going to basically relieve the tension on the bolt handle. You're going to press that down. Your bolt handle comes into a new position. You see it locked like that. And when I pull this out, you'll understand why. So once I pull that out, that gives you your firing pin assembly. All right. All ready to go there. Now your bolt handle comes out. Okay. And what that was doing, you can actually see there's a little recess right here, right? Yep. So it's locking into that recess. I see. Yep. And then pin falls out. Your bolt comes out. Easy enough. That's and that is the disassembly. So let's talk about the barrel real quick. Um, are you guys making those in-house? We're going to be making those barrels in-house, yep. Okay. And are they cold hammer forward? They're buttoned. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're buttoned stainless barrels is what we're doing right there. Okay. And then, how did, as far as the barrels, I'm sure, how does it mount up to the receiver? Are they they're interchangeable, obviously? Like you could. Yes, they are. Oh, that's one feature I totally missed. I appreciate you bringing that up. One of the things that is unique about this is we actually have a, a barrel nut barrel extension configuration. So the head space is set at the factory prior to anybody having to get it. Um, so with that being said, there's actually a castle that actually allows that head space to be adjusted to, opt to remove a lot of tolerances. So normally you would be, if you look at an AR, you're basically, you torque your barrel nut on, or your barrel extension on, and it, the head space is what the design is set up to be. Here we actually can tune it in, turn that cast nut, and lock it into place. So we can actually adjust that head space to be exactly where we want it to be, and not do the tolerance of a barrel extension and a, and a barrel, okay? Um, but yeah, it goes very much in, just like a AR barrel nut, and underneath this, you can take that barrel nut, you can take it off, and the hex wrench that takes that off, and you can change your barrel out. So our plan is to have accessory barrels, not just replaceable if you shoot it out, but also longer, heavier barrels. So we want to have some 24-inch barrels, some large diameter barrels for those people who want to shoot position. Sure, sure. Who's the perfect user for this for this rifle? Because you, you're calling it the cross. I'm assuming crossover. Crossover. And you got so, so you know you've got hunters, you've got precision rifle competition yep. kind of guys, you've got just the backyard plinking kind of guys. Uh, that just want to smack some steel out there at a thousand yards. Um, you're trying to hit all those a little bit, but you know, you've gone really lightweight with the rifle, whereas, for example, the Precision Rifle Series style competitions, which is kind of my ballpark, okay. everybody's going heavier. Yep. So just kind of explain who's your who's your target consumer for this thing? So our target consumer is, I would say, more of the new age hunter. The guy that's going to go out there, he's going to hike, you know, six, eight, ten, twelve miles. Um, weight means everything, you know, like you're carrying as little water as you can because you're going to get your water in the field. You're, that, those types of things. That's really who we're looking at. Um, we did call it cross for the exact reason you have, you had said, but this is meant to be a precision PRS gun. You're not going to want to shoot a competition with the way you're going to buy this, okay? We made it so you can set it up to do that, and we are going to make the model to that, but the rifle I'm holding right here, this is set up for the hunter that's a technical hunter. Yeah, very good, very good. Right. So now, let's um, let's transition into the caliber. So we've got 6.5, we've got we've got 308, yep. which are you know kind of obvious to people. Sure. I think they've been around long enough that most people are like 308 versus, it's like the 9 versus 45 debate. Right, right. right. 
but you guys have got a 277 Sig Fury. Right. You want to explain that a little bit? To yeah, so the 277 Sig Fury is based on the 6.8 round that we're doing for the U.S. Army. Okay. Um, the real advantage of that is it's the hybrid case technology that we're putting behind it. So it's actually a case that has a stainless steel base that allows us to jack the pressures way up. So pressures you're going to see in this are between 75 and 85,000 psi, where traditionally you know you're down in the 60,000 psi. So what that does is it allows us to push that bullet much, much faster. So for example, a 277 is a 140 grain bullet that we're shooting out of this, um, and it has nine feet less drop out of this 16 inch barrel than a 6.5 Creedmoor, okay, at a thousand yards. Okay. At 300 yards, it has 40% more energy. Okay, and I'm using 300 yards because that's like a hunting distance as opposed to using a thousand. Sure. But people like to hear a thousand yards per drop, so that's why I use that number. Yeah. Okay, and so the hunting round, too, just because of the energy for the most part. It's all about the energy. It's all about yeah. the energy. So everybody thinks velocity, velocity. Well, velocity doesn't mean anything if you don't have energy being transported. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So for your hunter, that guy who wants to, to hunt anything from coyotes on up to, let's say, elk, yep. he's going to be squared away with something like that. Absolutely. Awesome. awesome. Well, guys, I think this is a pretty sweet bolt action rifle. I'm going to give you my final thoughts on it uh, as we cut away. But, um, John, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it, guys. I hope you appreciated that. Thanks for watching TFB TV, and of course, stay tuned for all the great SHOT Show videos coming at you this week.